Okay, hi everybody. In this example, we're going to learn how to make a stack of objects in matter.js. So in this example, I have six columns and eight rows of stacked rectangles, and there's a gap between the rectangles. And in, in this example, I uh, will teach you how to adjust the number of rows and columns that you want, and how to adjust the gap in between the columns and rows. And the best part is knocking them down. Oh, I did it! Ah, finally! Uh, Matter Jazz is a lot of fun. So let's look at the code and see how this works. The first part of the program, I'm adding all my essential modules. And then in the second part, I'm creating my engine and my render. And I'm setting my canvas width and height to 500 pixels and my background to light blue by passing in this hex value. And then the setup functions is where I'm making my stack. And there's basically three steps to making a stack. First is declaring your options. So what will it look like? How will it act? The second step is the stating the dimensions of the stack. What is the starting X and Y position, the number of columns, the number of rows, the column gap, and the gap between rows. And the third step is specifying what type of shape do you want to make the stack out of? Do you want to make a stack of rectangles? Do you want to make a stack of circles, polygons? And what are their dimensions? And what are their options? What do they look like? How will they act? Okay, so let's look at the steps. In this constant stack options, I'm declaring that is static is set to false. That means it is movable. It will respond to gravity. And then my render options, I'm setting the fill to yellow, the outline to black and the outline width to three pixels. And then I'm going to make my stack. So it says, let my stack, my stack variable will hold the stack object. And it says matter.composites.stack. So stack is the method used to create the stack of objects. And it accepts six arguments. The starting X position, so 100. The starting Y position, that's zero. The number of columns, six. The number of rows, eight. The gap between the columns, so that's 20 pixels. And the gap between the rows, that's 15 pixels. And then it has a callback function. It's passing the x and y value into this function. And this function will make the object in the specific position in the stack. So let's follow this function here. So after the curly brackets, it continues down here. It says return matter.bodies.rectangle. It will return that object at the specific position in that stack and the dimensions of the rectangle 40 pixels wide and 40 pixels high and what will it look like it will look like whatever is in the stack options constant that we declared up here it will act like this it will be movable and it will look like this it will be yellow with a black outline once we know the starting position and the number of rows and columns and the gap between them it just it goes through each location in the stack and places a rectangle according to these dimensions and the options we passed in and once that's done we just need to add the stack to the world in the next part here i have composite.add Add is the method. Whatever objects we're adding to the world, we list in an array. If there's only one object, then you don't need the square brackets. You could just put it in like that. But I'm listing two objects, so I'm putting it in square brackets. So I'm passing in my stack into the world and ground. Ground is a rectangle I created at the bottom of the screen to hold up the stack. Otherwise, the stack would just fall off the screen because of the gravity simulation. And that's all there is to it. That's how you add a stack in matter.js.